Here we are. Hola, Laura. Hey, hola. Hola. Uh, how are you? Yo estoy bien. ¿Y tú? Muy bien, muy bien. Okay, <laughs> so just a little introduction for our audience here. Uh, can you just say your name and how long you've been here at EFA, etc.? Sure. Mi nombre es Laura Anderson Barbata. I have been um, a member of uh, EFA Studios since uh, this year. Yes, <laughs> it's so exciting. We're so happy to have you. And I, yes, me too. Me yeah. too. And and it's been amazing. I applied not knowing that we would be in COVID this COVID time, and actually, uh, it's been it was it's been amazing because uh, yeah. the other studio I had before mm -hmm. I lost prematurely right um, because of COVID and. Right. Uh, so EFA has been incredible, incredible in assisting with problems and how to solve things. Mm -hmm. and Wonderful. And what a beautiful <laughs> studio. So I'm just going to kind of take everybody through this absolutely gorgeous space that you've set up in not, in not so much time. <laughs> Actually, so, so beautiful. And I feel I'm still installing myself. It takes a while. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you move, you move stuff, then you... I need to move stuff again and uh, come over here and look at this like up here oh yeah let's take a look wow this is incredible so here's things that are from uh, some earlier works but not, I often use uh, old pieces older pieces I, I hadn't seen this the last time that I was no, here this is all <clears throat> Something I've been working on for a while actually it's very much based on um, uh, it's like your the project that you know that you're more familiar with which is uh, the indigo projects exactly mm -hmm. intervention indigo mm -hmm. and this one is uh, is a project that addresses violence towards women mm -hmm. feminicides um, during COVID the increase in feminicides all over the world has increased increased dramatically it's always been an issue always been a problem due to domestic violence due to domestic violence mm -hmm. due to uh, uh gender uh, discrimination gender discrimination mm -hmm. due to uh, cultural you know just inherited when you know just and also just the fact that it has also been, um, how do you, it's, it, it's, it's, it's been going on and in on and on. Yeah, yeah, in perpetuity. Yeah, it's been going on for a long time. Yeah. Right, and people don't get, uh, they don't, uh, they're not held accountable for violence towards women often. Yes. It's, it's getting better, but it's n still not. Um, up there so this is what this is about and I and I wanted to work with something that is uh, that is natural and mm -hmm. that is uh, very symbolic which is cochinilla and cochinilla is a little beetle mm -hmm. and only the female gives the color mm -hmm. and the color range of cochinilla goes from pink all and you know what I didn't I was gonna say do you have any cochinilla for us to look I have a I have I have to get it from upstairs Oh, that's okay. Um, but I do have tons of cochinilla dyed things and samples. I can't believe Fantastic. it. Fantastic. So this is so this, this is, is examples of the cochineal this, dye. This one is not cochinilla though. Oh, this one. What is this one? This one are synthetic dyes. I didn't do this one. This one a friend of mine who I've learned a lot from. This oh, fantastic. Is called, this is called snow dyeing. Mm -hmm. But all of these... So and I think this is this is a good job of showing kind of a range the range. Do you use yes. like a uh, lemon and different acids and bases to create the different ranges or I do, but I also started to incorporate as I was developing the pro you know the ideas mm -hmm. around this. So only the female gives the color which is incredible. Mm -hmm. So very symbolic for a project mm -hmm. like about feminicide yeah, right? feminicide. And she has to be crushed right in order to release the color right um so there's this all this 
And so then I also felt it was important to talk about um, healing. Yeah. And so also recognize women's role as healers mm -hmm. and uh, women's roles in the kitchen, uh, producing healing medicinal things, uh, producing food for the family. Absolutely. So I started to incorporate flowers and herbs that have medicinal power and medicinal mm. ca characteristics. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like this is uh, this is uh, uh, sempasuchil, which is um, the, the flower we, we call uh, that we use for the Day of the Dead, and so it's used for rituals, but it's also of for healing, and it also produces color. And here is a flower that in, in Mexico is called Jamaica, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I love Jamaica. And, and, oh, have you tried the Jamaica that the guy makes across the street? No. Mm -hmm. Really good Jamaica. Very good. Good tips. Good tips. <laughs> yes. So the Jamaica, also in the Caribbean, interesting that it's called Jamaica. Uh, it must have come from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, but it, in the Caribbean, it's called Sorrel. Huh. So this is also, um, has so many properties that are healthful. Yeah, it's delicious. Yes. <laughs> what is it called here? Uh, I think it's hibiscus. 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 I think hibiscus. Something like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so the properties in this are also healing and also produces amazing colors. I can show you piece by piece. And then roses, rose petals. rose petals in um, Mexico are used also um, as c to cleanse mm -hmm. and to bring love into your life. Mm -hmm. and, so and so I, and you can die with them. So I thought it's important to use all of that. The same with saffron, matter root. Here it says it's a blood purifier, mm -hmm. skin diseases. So matter mm -hmm. root also gives us some really beautiful colors. And of course, ah, did you ask for cochinilla? Yes. <laughs> Here we go. And you can see these are little beetle bodies. It's a little hard little to. Beetle bodies, yes. I don't know why this is having a problem. And you can look at this pretty little card that shows. Mm -hmm. So they grow on the cacti, mm -hmm. and they they are they they are like um, a pest mm -hmm. that attaches itself and then just lives on it, and uh, and that is the cochinilla. Mm -hmm. So she likes to 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 live on the cactus mm -hmm. leaves, and they look like these white feathery things. Yeah, and they just take a like a brush and remove them all, dry them, and then separate males from females. Yeah. Which I have no idea. How, how do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> but the use of, the use of uh, cochinilla <clears throat> revolutionized art mm -hmm. in the it world did. because it was, uh, it is a more, has more uh, staying properties for in, in fibers yeah many of the european wrote like the garments of kings and queens the church uh yeah the church <laughs> from exactly. i guess it the 1600s on or 1700s on or i don't know yes what. very very early on well cochinilla made it even more available and more popular and it yeah. became the symbol of royalty as well yeah exactly right? and those deep purples and right. also i mean rich reds right it's right. an amazing color it is and it its is. range is really incredible like i love how it can go from like a hot like an orange or a yellowy color like all the way down to like a deep purple or a brown right yeah it's true it's true um let's see. you can see some swatches here of yeah. Like you could get real like purpley, lavendery. Ooh, that's so pretty. Have you dyed with avocado pits? I have actually, and because the the last time I dyed with some avocado pits, I came up with a color oh, really? that was similar to this. Yes, and it was beautiful. I loved it. Oh, you're came good. Came up like a, like a pink color. You're good mm -hmm. because I've only gotten kind of like a like. I dyed some like silk peachy. with it, and it came out just absolutely wow. gorgeous. Wow. Yep. 
So, okay, so you are a dyer. <laughs> this is kind of the color I got. This is not it, but but um, here we have cochinilla and also indigo combined. Here we have- I love um, these samples that you've created. I, I love playing with them. This is all uh, cochinilla and then um, acids and just being in touch with certain metals mm -hmm. will do this. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. How gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And what kinds of uh, fabrics are these? Are these mostly? This is most, most of them are silks, but yeah. here's some cotton, but <clears throat> wool. Um, and then this is indigo, I assume. These. This is indigo, yes. And this is indigo with um, acorns. What? Pretty. Indigo with acorns does that? Isn't that nice? Oh my gosh, that's like my favorite. I right? love that color. And then doing it gradient is pretty fun. So we're going to have to dye together. I think we, I absolutely would love that. <laughs> I've set up a whole dye area. Maybe well. that's, that's our next uh, public thing that we sure. do. Sure. Yeah. That would be fun. We'll die together. I can't imagine a more fun thing to watch and to be part of. To, right, yeah. right, to get into. This yes. Does, this, they all say, cochinilla first dip, mm -hmm. acorns and turmeric second dip. Look at how rich that color is. It's just absolutely ecstatic. Beautiful. So turmeric also that has so many properties, healing properties, medicinal properties. I'm using that. Um, yeah, so that's what that is about, but I still haven't, so I, I want, I'm making these giant flags mm -hmm. because I envision like this mm -hmm. group Procession. Of, right, of women uh, carrying these flags, like, so I've been making, I have a few more, but, and then I've been making these smaller pieces to make garments, like they would be probably wearing white and then I want to make a queen, I want to make jumbies, I want to, but I don't know how yet. Right. But this comes actually. Do you have sketching in your practice? Do you draw? Not always, very rarely. Do you I, take notes? Like how do you come up with this sort of performance or activity around these objects? This I've written a lot about because I thought a lot about it um, and I felt this need for a long time, be, be, even before COVID, that how can we address this? How can we work and address this issue with, through our art? Um, how can we highlight and bring attention to it? I mean, it's known, but we need to 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 talk about it more. Yeah, uh, because I think. Um, it will also help to bring about change conscious and, and consciousness of it. I, I, yeah, it's so complicated and, and so sad, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's a, almost an epidemic and a lot of it starts uh, when, with young girls who are uh, victims of- Abuse. Of abuse, exactly. There's so yeah. much of that and it starts there. Um, according to one of the experts on trauma, he says that it's an epidemic in the United States of child abuse, um, sexual child abuse. And so it's just so hard to come down and to, you know, control that mm -hmm. and protect the children. Well, we can, no one can be protected if we're not talking about it and conscious, exactly. bring it up as a conscious discussion in society. Exactly. That we protect our children and, and exactly yeah, and that you see other people standing up for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you might be afraid at first to say something, but if you see enough people saying no, that's wrong, no, that's wrong, um, I, I'm I'm here to help or let's talk about it, then people can 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 begin that process. Yeah. So yeah. this project comes is informed by the work also about um, about uh, intervention indigo, uh, uh, say her name, just mm -hmm. so many, 
so many instances of violence towards women that, uh, so it's, it's... I think it'd be nice to talk a little bit about processional and maybe ritual and maybe t- take a look at some of these sure. um, other costumes that you put together and conceive of and, and how this sort of works into your practice as well. Right. Well, this work is kind of a, there's a few different periods and, and, or different characters from different series. Right. Ah. I know. But mainly, this is, uh, it starts off as Raphael Red. So how did I, uh, this also led me to... The Cochinian. The Cochinian. Yeah. Because these are, some of these are replicas of very, very old silks that probably we were dyed with cochinilla. Ah, okay. So this is how red they right. are. They mm-hmm. are. Um, this was part of, um, of a residency at the, uh, I was going to say the Elizabeth Foundation, <laughs> <laughs> um, at the uh, Pratt, um, what, what is happening to me? So this is this is part of the uh, <laughs> which one in Espanol? Fui uh, artista en residencia en el en el en el museo Gardner in oh museo Gardner okay. okay in Boston in Boston yeah sí y yo quise hablar acerca de la invisible labor mm-hmm. sí el trabajo invisible lo que no se ve El trabajo de curadores, sí. de restauradores, eh, porque esto... This yeah, is, the janitors, the people taking care yes, of the building, custodia. the... Yeah, the, all, there's so many layers of labor within any institution that are not acknowledged. Yes. Yeah. And so the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum was um, in the process of a restoration. Right for a room called Rafael room with, right. with the Rafael paintings. Oh, okay. So, um, so when you, you go to the Rafael room in the Isabella Stewart Gardner, which, which is a is, huge, you know, the renovation is, I'm, it's amazing. It's an incredible it, renovation. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you go and you go see the paintings, but behind those paintings, right behind these paintings are hanging in front of in one room, more than 50 patterns of different silks. <gasps> oh my gosh. You just see red, right? You right. just think, oh, red. Uh, red, beautiful. Right. F- over 50 patterns. And so That's I thought. That's insane. We That's, don't see that. We right? don't see that, right. And it's part of, it is part of that same mindset right. of like the invisibility of patterns, invisibility of like you know, women's labor exactly. of the in, the sort of invisibility of even the decorative exactly. or perceptions of the decorative. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. what supports, what is there to What show. is there to see the math of patriarchy. Exactly. It's like this beautiful thing, but it's actually much more complex and and a whole thing beyond, right. That yes. makes sense. Thank that you for sense. saying that because also yeah. most of that invisible layer, labor, labor yeah. are women and BIPOC communities. Yes, right? absolutely. Um, so we did, I started to do research and work around uh, the patterns, isolating the patterns. I, mm. they were, and we started to print them on textiles. Oh, so then you printed those. Yeah. Amazing. So these are actually, um, actually from. The Isabella Stewart Gardner yes, Museum. Because they had, in their restoration project, they were duplicating the silks. Right. So they had to do this work. And so I asked for that and then adapted it to these proportions. Wow. So this one is a different one. What a co- what a really interesting way to interface with a new restoration project and to highlight. Highlight. Yeah, yeah. highlight something that might be easily overlooked. Right. And to, to centralize it. And to bring it back out. That's wonderful. That's and they're, fantastic. Thank you. And I think that's, thank you for that. Because I think it's such important work. And we don't it's think so about that. It's so important. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. And it's, and it's, again, it's mostly women who are doing that work. So here we have some characters. Here's another one from Rafael Red. And the crowns are all inspired by the patterns. 
And this has gone through several varia variations. So were these shown at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum? We performed uh, in front of the museum. Right. Um, we performed the, the, the work with uh, the Brooklyn Jumbies. Oh, yeah. And uh, and local dancers and a queen that was a, is a local uh, dancer also, mm -hmm. and uh, so yes, so it was performed. And then I was uh, I was invited by um, by Carrie Mae Wins mm -hmm. to be a part of her a project she has is is called um, the future. We are the future. The future is now, and it, it is. It is me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I had already started to, you know, deconstruct some of these works and re rework them. And so, um, this queen became my character, and this crown is like a neck piece. Mm -hmm. that the face is completely covered by these candy. Mm -hmm. And um, and I give them personally to everybody and I say one love thank you you know I say like that and then at the end it's all undone but all of the so the, with me are all the jumbies and I'm on the ground right so so that's that is and just good. just to also reiterate the jumbies are on stilts the, yes thank you that's why they're doing that's that. why they're so tall <laughs> and actually he needs to get up. But Laura does not do the stilt work. <laughs> no. I, I don't, I don't uh, dance on stilts. I, uh, it, it is my role mm -hmm. to take care of them, to bring light to them, to bring attention to them. They are a metaphor of looking at the world from a higher perspective. I, um, it, I feel it is my duty to do that. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I feel oh, it's a way through these art, this art practice, in which I talk with the Jumbies a lot, and we discuss the themes and the subjects, and you know how things are, what I'm thinking, and what we're what we're addressing. And um, and it is one of the practices that has has by them ancient important cultural roots, spiritual roots. But then it has also, with the colonization, was also uh, removed from its culture, mm -hmm. appropriated. Dislocated, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and turned into this acrobatic, theatrical kind of thing. Right. So to me, the, the Jumbies... Right. Re right. right. Replace, like they reclaim Come, that and put right. it back in its correct place. Come back to that mm -hmm. in a contemporary context. Yeah. Context. Um, and so I've been working with the Brooklyn Jumbie since 2007. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing uh, That's relationship. That's such a wonderful relationship to have and right. such a good collaboration. It's been wonderful. Yes. Here's a cool photo. Of a, oh yes. One of our first interventions. This one's uh, titled Intervention Wall Street. Love it. So you see me on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so Intervention Wall Street has to do addresses the uh, economic crisis mm -hmm. brought on by the financial yes sector, and I represent my 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 small figure is. Uh, represents the percentage of women in corporate America and the percentage of pay to men. But there's a lot wow. of layers going on here. We also gave out throughout the performance. So here we are in the financial district, right? Mm -hmm. Giant businessmen. We look up to them. They're also Moko Jumbies. Mm -hmm. They come to cleanse. And we are handing out chocolate gold-covered <laughs> coins that say Mexicanum. So we are talking about gift-giving, about sharing wealth. We are also giving. Yeah. And reminding people also, cacao was a gift 
of Mexico yes. to the world. Yes. Um, and it was used also as a form of currency before the Spanish. So there's a lot of layers going on. And um, we invited all our friends, whoever wanted to, to join us, but on the sides, and they had um, backpacks with speakers mm -hmm. that sang the OJs. Money, 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 money. <laughs> it's a great song. Great song, <laughs> yes. So that's, that's that. Fantastic. He's a leader cool. of the Brooklyn Zombies. He's also co-founder. So Nadja Codrington, uh, Ali Sylvester, the two co-founders. And uh, this is Salim. And this is Marcus. Great. So we have like five more minutes or a little less than five minutes left. What else would you, yeah, let's, let's go out on a, on a map, on a, yes, maybe let's talk about this because this is also covered in the times too, the, the article, which was really nice. That was a great article. Oh yeah. Thank you. So at the, at the start of, um, COVID pandemic lockdown, I had just come back from Mexico where I had performed Indigo, Intervention Indigo and, uh, and it was obvious that the most, that the communities that would be most impacted are BIPOC communities. So I started to just sew, sew, sew with what I had around me, which was mostly indigo fabrics, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and look for people that need them. Look right. to Queens, look to the Bronx, find the networks of people, how to get them and distribute them. And so I started to make masks and wouldn't, didn't stop. I still am I'm still sending out masks all over um, to Native American reservations, to Texas, to the Bronx here. Um, and in this, uh, in this, in this, Mm, what what is what in this effort to 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 get masks to as many people as I could, I started to find the most incredible responses from people. They, I would say, you know, I'm making it for you. Please use it in good health, and then say, uh, I want to give you something in in exchange in return. So cool. And it was, it reminded me of that's how my work has always. Uh, it has always started from that place of reciprocity, values, exchange, bridges, building bridges. And, um, and so they started, people would just send me things, flowers, milk, tortillas, maseca, beans, jalapenos. And it was, incredible and i realized especially now that we are in this time it is more important than ever to find those and create those networks of support for each other and and these dynamics of uh, of sharing of, of giving um of receiving right and knowing how to activate this within our communities so that we are not uh as vulnerable yeah, the mutual aid actually yeah. needs to be happening at a more regular level because we can't trust our institutions and our systems all the time to do that work for us. Like, we need to be doing that work for each other. Exactly. And they're not going to do it. They're I not mean, going to do it. They're we dependent know. on the system. Yeah. Other systems, yeah. And that's part of us um, actually uh, overthrowing the sort of colonization that has been imposed upon us and um, taken power away from people, essentially. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, I think that's part of the work of undoing of some of these toxic relationships that have been built up and, you know, rebuilding positive relationships and healthy relationships, ones that are right. built on mutual understanding, on reciprocity, on trust. Right. 
I'm How can we do each that? each other's labor. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm each other's labor. It's like, we need to start from scratch, essentially. Yes. And little gestures like, yeah, I make you this, you give me that. That's, right. that's a good way to start. Right. You know, right. the conversation. It's true. And so, I'm, so that has made me hyper aware that it needs to be, like you said, just activated more. And we need to... But I really think, I think that's such a, it's so potent, the understanding that gift, gift giving or like giving is part of a practice, yes. you know? Yes, that's, a, that, that's true. Yes. And that is a part of our society. Yeah, that's um, part of our society. society. Let's say early society. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and now, uh, you know, I, I have a friend who regularly sends me fabrics that's fantastic as a gift to continue making masks love it so when i ran out she was Giving eager away. to to support women's co cooperatives and women's groups of textile weavers or i mean textile printers because these are um all 100 percent cotton but they're hand printed mm -hmm. and uh and so it's been this fabric my father gave me uh, so it's just really been a, a, a really beautiful experience. I've learned so much from him. Well, thank you so much, Laura, for everything, for your time, for your energy, for your generosity. Uh, we appreciate you. We're so happy to have you, thank you. at EFA. Thank, thank you. For you. Yes. And bye. if you need a mask, let me know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, bye.